Today we are checking out four new CRKT models. Some of these are very impressive. We're gonna save the best for last, but starting this off, we have the new Compact Homefront, a Ken Onion design after a World War II knife. It is made in Taiwan, and this one, while being more compact of an, of an already existing larger version, this one's in premium materials. We have DLC coated S35VN. DLC is diamond-like coating. It is the most scratch resistant, the most durable blade coating or coating period uh, that exists. So this is going to have like 90 HRC from DLC. So think about that. Yeah, 90 HRC. Uh, most, we don't even have blade steels that hard. So that makes it to where it's much, it's a lot less likely to scratch and to scuff and things like that. Not saying it's impossible, but you know, it, it, it's, it's up there um, as far as, uh, you know, resistance goes. Now, this one is a manual knife. We'll talk about the action here in one second. But the materials, S35VN DLC coated, aluminum bolster. It has very, very grippy G10, super grippy. Uh, I believe this is a polymer backspacer, very well jimped. It has the same jimping up here on the aluminum bolsters. It does have steel liners, and it has a ball bearing pivot. So it has bearings that are very very smooth and this thing has an amazing flipper this is i can just look at that and see that this is such a good flipper it is very comfortable and this is a flipper tab that you can build up on if you want to do the push button you can build up very comfortably or you can just break the detent by doing a light switch super snappy I love seeing uh, action like this, um, you know, not being non-assisted, I guess I should say. Um, I love manual action. I think manual action is far superior to any other action. So the blade shape and geometry, this one is slightly more on the robust side, um, but it's also still plenty slicey. This is going to be just fine for most people. They did a nice edge angle uh, as far as the sharpening goes which I'm very happy to see because if it was a higher edge angle and it was a smaller edge bevel, a much tougher edge bevel, I would want to lay it back. I would want to lower it so that it was more slicey. This one's going to be plenty slicey and it's going to be easier to strop and hone back being a lower angle. Now, you know, as far as resharpening goes, I'll probably just match it if I resharpen it or maybe lower it just slightly more, but this is a good edge angle. So happy to see that. This is a blade that you could be a little bit tough on while also still being plenty slicey. Um, you could definitely use that tip without the fear of it breaking, chipping or anything like that. So this is a very durable blade while also still being a very useful and not over the top as far as toughness goes. It's gonna be plenty slicey. Now, the Ergos are, you know, it's a compact knife, but I can't get a full four finger grip. Um, it's, you know, it's more of like a three and a half finger grip, but I can easily, you know, lock it in and it's nice and secure. It's not something I'd wanna bear down on all day just because this is very, very grippy. I mean, this is like sandpaper grippy. Um, and it does have a deep carry clip inset with a button screw and you know it's over the top of this super grippy g10 so you know it's going to be there's really no clip that could be on top of this that is where it's going to be super smooth but it's fine this is a good clip it's a smooth clip you know it's just it is over grippy g10 and you know to go into nitpicks t6s i prefer t8s i think t8s are just much better as far as um takedown of a knife and it lasting over time because if you take apart your knife throughout the years you know you don't want to strip the screws or anything like that and t8s are just much more reliable and much more resilient to you know stripping and things like that the next nitpick is the 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 button screw on the clip i wish that it was flat or in set is it going to be a big deal no it's fine um next thing normally i complain about the end of the plunge grind if it lands over the edge which this one does you can see the shadow line right that ends 
right here over the edge. So I prefer normally the end of the plunger end to be way back here so that you have all of this life to sharpen off. However, this one's not a, a, a crazy taper, so I don't think it's really going to create too much of a smile when you sharpen it because it's, you know, it's pretty close to the same thickness of the edge as it goes back. So I'm really not going to complain about that. I don't think it's going to chip any stones. I don't think it's going to be difficult to sharpen. So, uh, but normally I would uh, say I, I prefer the end of the plunge grind to be, be way behind the edge, never over the top of it. Um, this just happens to be an outlier. Other than that, um, you know, this thing's pretty awesome. Um, I think this thing has a damn good look to it. This is a good looking knife. I love the look of this. I love how this tapers from narrow to beefier. The tip is going to be easy to get to for utility cuts while also having plenty of belly to cut down on top of a surface. It's something that has, you know, a little bit more robust geometry while also still being plenty slicey. So it's going to be something that's going to be very versatile for most people. Um, like I said, I wouldn't want to bear down on it all day, but, you know, just for regular everyday carry purposes and, and you know, things you're going to use your knife for during the day, phenomenal. This is a really cool one. I do like this knife quite a bit. So, and like I said, man, it has, dan look at this stripe right here. You know, you got the, the star and then in the aluminum, you got this, uh, this milled out stripe on uh, both sides, two stripes. That just looks good to me. Like I said, the blade shape, the bolster, even down to the colors, man. I, I love this. I think this thing is a damn good looking knife while also being a great functioning knife. And I'm very happy that it's a manual action. Let's get to the next one. So the next one is a USA made CRKT compact ritual. Now there's already a larger version of this, hence compact, same thing with the previous knife, but this one's made in the USA and it has a wicked look to it. We have a very, very high sweeping tipped uh, Persian, <laughs> harpooned Persian. This is a harpooned trailing point or harpooned Persian blade shape with a very high tip. Belly for days, as Stasa 23 would say. We have steel bolsters. Oh, sorry. 12C27 blade steel. 12C27, love that steel. It's um, very similar to 14C28N, and, and it's just, it's a steel I, I think is great. Steel bolsters, steel liner lock, and burlap micarta scales. Good looking burlap, too. Nice cut of it. It does have some micro machining lines over the surface that does add to a little bit of a tactile feel to it. Now, the action is assisted. So this is an assisted knife. So all you got to do is break the assist, basically just open it, you know, pull down on the flipper and it's going to flip all the way out because it has a spring to it. Now, when you disengage it, the, the spring tension is not super strong in the beginning, but about right there is where you start feeling it. And then you just have to go past that resistance. Super snappy, very easy to close open and close one-handed. The pocket clip, while it looks like it's titanium, it is a steel pocket clip that is machined. Great ramp. You know, it does function really well. Now, as far as negatives go, you know, so I have a few here, but some of these things are completely personal preferences. One thing, I'm not a fan of the knife because to me, this is not very useful. Um, this is a knife that I think does have some really cool fact, or has a lot of cool factors to it, but the tip is just entirely up too high for me to want to use for a utility cut. I almost want to turn it around and use it like this, <laughs> which that's probably how I would use it to open things up. Uh, the belly on the blade is so long, you know, it's like there's not very much you could do with it. Uh, slicing, it's going to slip right out of cuts. You, you can cut down on a flat surface. That's, a, you know, what it's going to be good for. So, you know, that, that's, that's personal preference, but I do think a lot of people would agree because, you know, you don't see people walking around with Persians and, and you know, high, super high tip trailing points for a reason, you know, maybe for hunting and things like that, self-defense, that's another thing, but this one's almost up too high for self-defense. I don't know. Uh, it might work for that, but as far as more nitpicks goes, uh, as we move back, the plunge grind, I prefer... Now, so it's hard for me to complain about this because they do 
do a straight down um, plunge grind. So the plunge grind doesn't go from here and taper all the way out to here, just go straight down. So you're going to be able to sharpen up the plunge grind. So that's not too bad. Um, I normally prefer a sharpening notch or it to be separated from the plunge grind, um, you know, because as you sharpen it, this is going to wind up popping out lower than the edge as the edge, you know, as you remove steel, the edge is going to go up, you know, closer to the spine. But not that big of a deal and it's a nice little spot right here for you to choke up to and ergonomically man you know it's it sweeps like this so to me it's not the best ergos um it, it just it turns in my hand a little too much now i don't mind the three fingers right here and i can wrap my pinky around so this is okay um you know if i choke up it's a lot better pinch grips are good but it does force you into position so um, the next thing is lock bar access. They did not give you any lock bar access. So you have to smash your finger in there and I slip off of it constantly. I'm constantly trying and fighting to get it like right there. I couldn't even get it. It's just, it's almost irritating to me. I am a huge, huge stickler or I, I'm very nitpicky about lock bar access. And this is a good example of one that I just, I prefer not to have. Um, it's just, it's hard to get to, um, so the thumb studs on this are slippery in my opinion. There's no texturing around the edges and they're very close to the scales. So when I go to deploy it, I slip off of them almost every time. So they're, they're just a little too, the reverse flick is good, but when I thumb flick it, it's like I just, I slip off of it constantly. So you see, like it just, you know, they're just too tight to the scales and they're too slippery. There's not enough texturing. Once you know it, you know, you, you'll obviously get used to it, but you know, it's definitely a nitpick in my opinion. The next thing, the action is assisted. Now, if you love assisted knives, then don't even pay attention to anything I'm about to say, but I prefer manual knives. I think there's a place for assisted, so that's cool. There, I like that there, there are assisted knives. However, in 2024, we have gotten down action so, so well that it assisted almost doesn't even need to exist anymore because we have such good detent, such good action, and you know, in many cases, and I'm not saying this is the case here, but a lot of people look at assisted nowadays as a company cutting corners because they don't have to get down a detent. They don't have to get down the smoothness of the action, the free flowing of the blade. You know, it allows them to cut a few corners. And if it ever breaks, you know, and there's no detent holding the blade in, it makes it, you know, harder to open. However, you know, a lot of people do like them. And I know there's a lot of, especially like uh, elders or, or people that have problems with their hands, things like that. You know, uh, I understand it. And I, and I, I, like I said, I do appreciate that it does exist. And I know there's people out there that, that benefit from it. So it, it's more of um, a nitpick just for me. I prefer a manual action. I prefer not having resistance when I close it. Uh, but you know, to each their own. But one last little tiny nitpick is the T6s. I prefer T8s, you know, hey, not that big of a deal. As far as what's what's good about it though, the cool factor's off the charts. <laughs> it definitely has a lot of cool factor and I appreciate that. I really, really do. So I, I, I I'm, I love that it exists. You know, I love that because a lot of people actually bought this, um, I, you know, and, and I can't argue with that, man. I can't argue with the community wanting what they want. So this was a wicked design. Uh, granted, probably not going to be a super useful design, but as far as cool factor goes, a harpooned Persian blade. I don't even know if I've ever seen that before. <laughs> Not on a pocket knife. So very, very cool. The cool factor, like I said, off the charts. Next is the Bear Claw. So the Bear Claw comes in two different versions. You have a self-defense knife and a rescue or first responders knife. Now, these are purpose-driven knives. So this is one I am not going to do any nitpicks over. These are purpose-driven. These are specific to a task like this one. This one will be something for a first responder or, or even just yourself if you want a tool to be able to save somebody from a seatbelt, a rope, things like that. The reason why the tip is not sharp is so that you can get up to them and get behind the rope or seatbelt and then cut. It's using vef serrations on an OS 8 blade 
The serrations are incredibly sharp. I mean, these things are wicked sharp. And I think VEF serrations have changed a lot of people's opinions on serrations if they didn't like them because these things are awesome. It's a low angle serration that's at an angle. So yeah, that thing's nasty. But being that it is thick and it's not sharp at the tip, it allows you to, like I said, to, to get to somebody or under their clothes or whatever and not have the fear of cutting them when you're cutting something off of them. Uh, the handles are polymer and the finger is not made for you to put your finger all the way in. It's made just for the first nub. Then you wrap your middle finger, your ring finger, and then the pinky kind of just secures it in your palm. This is something that's going to be very difficult to get out of your hand. And that's why, as far as the self-defense version goes, the sharp one, the one that bites back, good geometry, nice and thin, nice and slicey, um, no sharpening choil, which is how it's supposed to be because it's a self-defense knife. You want the material to go right into the edge. So again, you don't put your finger all the way in. You just put your first nub and then this is going to be very, very, very difficult near impossible to strip out of your hand because your the handle is so packed into your palm you know you can you know it's going to be hard to get it off out of your hand you know and you have so much control with your finger through that hole so you can use it like a claw and anything you hit you know even if you hit it on the knuckle it's going to pull the edge into it if the tip hits it's slightly curved with that slight curve if the tip just hits into something it's going to pull itself in that's one thing i appreciate about blade shapes like this for self-defense they are devastating once that tip touches it's pulling itself in so game over the clip and carry or sorry the sheath and carry i should say so they do come with lanyards that you can make a neck knife out of so if you want to carry it as a neck knife or two it also comes with a clip so you can put the clip on it for in the pocket or on the belt and you know the the orange one does come with an orange paracord it comes with the tool and all that stuff so very very cool man like i said these are very purpose driven and they're gonna work now um as far as the blade steel goes you know, since it's a purpose-driven knife, this is not a knife that you should be using as, you know, I'm not saying you can't. Like, if you're good at sharpening and you make sure your knives are always sharp, then yeah, if you need to use it to open up a package or for just basic EDC tasks, you can do that. But if it's your self-defense knife, just make sure you keep that sucker sharp. And being, you know, aus 8 steel, while it's not going to hold an edge for a long time, it'll be very easy to keep sharp. And now for the star of the show. This is a very premium CRKT, and this is a, a knife that I think can change a lot of people's perspectives on what CRKT is capable of. This is a limited edition knife. There's only 500 pieces, so that would be a downside for some of you that if you are going to want it, it's probably going to sell pretty quickly. Um, I don't even think the price is bad on it, to be honest. I, I think the price is, is perfect. Um, actually, I'm honestly surprised. I think they hit it right on the head with the price point. Um, I, I, can't, I don't know the country of origin, but regardless, I, I've thought that through. I think it's great. So we have an M390 deep hollow ground blade with a full hollow. The hollow goes all the way up to the spine and it is very thin. So we have M390 Super Steel with this mega thin blade that is going to be not only a utility cutting beast, but this will pass through materials like, like hot butter. We have titanium bolsters with a titanium liner lock, titanium full backspacer and pocket clip that matches the carbon fiber that has these little like it's like electric blue that pops out at certain angles it is gorgeous i freaking dig it man the whole design everything about it like from head to toe i think is gorgeous i think this is a damn good looking knife now, the ergonomics are really, really well done. Like, you can choke all the way up to that edge, and you don't have a flipper tab, so it's super comfortable. The pinch grips are, are, are amazing. Even if you choke back, it's nice and comfortable, and it's unique. It has a nice look to it, you know? It, it's not like it's something that, that, you know, is on every other knife. It has its own style. Um, the action, whew, my goodness. Did they not, this is what I mean. 
Like, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about assistant. Like, when you have action that's this good, do you need assistant? I mean, that's arguable. It's arguable. I know some people have problems. So, so in that case, I understand. But as far as the people that are that don't have, you know, problems or anything, this is exactly what you want in action. This has amazing thumb studs. The thumb studs are well-placed, well-positioned, and the detent is perfectly tuned for the reverse and thumb flick. I mean, it is just so, so snappy. Then you have this super light blade. This blade is so light with its hollow grind. It just, look at that. Look at how smooth that thing is. It, and it's, it has an interesting feeling because it's such a light blade. You, you don't feel it. You know what I mean? Like you don't feel it falling. Even when it pulls into the detent, you really don't feel it. You can hear it though. The front flipper, perfect front flipper. They did the, the exact chipping you want for a front flipper. They put the exact amount of tension you want for a front flipper like this. As far as detent goes, you can go from, you know, you can do the regular, uh, Front flipping with the with your thumb, you could do the reach over with your pointer finger. You can even do the side finger. All of them are very very easy, and it is just so so unbelievably smooth. Uh, fantastic action, man! Woo, that thing is so smooth. Love it, love it, love it. That this, um, like I said, this is is an action that most people would be very appreciative of. And like I keep saying, man, the style and the look of this thing is so damn good. Now, as far as the nitpicks go, let's talk about some nitpicks really quick. Now, this is a limited edition knife, so I don't want to beat it up too much. These aren't going to be available for everybody, so I wish they were. That, so that would be one nitpick. I wish more people were able to get it. Um, but... Liner lock access, while it's not horrible, and this is a, a very small nitpick, so I, I like a lot of access to a lock bar. They did chamfer this titanium liner really well, so it is pretty easy to get to, and there is no steel lock bar insert, so you might get a little hint of stick here and there, but it's fine. I mean, that, that I'm not even nitpicking about that. It's smooth. But I wish there was a little bit more lock bar access. Is it bad? No. It's just a tiny, tiny nitpick. Again, T6s, I wish they were T8s. I don't like T6s. I think for a knife, especially, you know, that we want to be able to have for years to come, you want to be able to not have a threat of stripping out your screws. And T8s are just less likely to do that. Uh, next thing, you guys think I'm going to complain about this plunge grind, but I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm going to just say one little thing about it. So one, I normally prefer this part to be not lower than the edge because when I sharpen, granite, the plunge grind does not taper. So it doesn't taper from here to here. It goes straight down. So if you're not going to have a choil, then this would be the way you do the plunge grind. So now you can just sharpen all the way up to the plunge grind. However, as you remove steel, the, the blade or the edge is only going to go higher and higher and higher, making this stand lower. So I'd prefer if this the edge was just a little bit lower than this, even if the plunge grind was still the same. Now, I don't think, it, you know, like I said, this is a limited edition knife, so it, it's not even that big of a deal. Um, and... and to me, this is also this is going to be so good at re return cuts. Like if you're going to do repeat cuts, not saying you're going to because, like I said, this is a special knife. But you know, if somebody was going to use it, I like to use my knives. So like if I was going to slice with this, I would appreciate how I can just go right back into a cut without the fear of you know clipping any choils or anything like that. The M390 blade steel. I don't know how well it's heat treated. I have no idea. I will say you're going to want to use diamonds when sharpening it. It is a high wear resistant, high carbide super steel. So make sure you use diamonds. Um, like I said, I don't know the HRC or how well it's heat treated. I hope, you know, hopefully it's done pretty well. Hopefully it's not too low of an HRC for this steel. But overall, the fit, the finish, the tolerances, the action, the looks, everything's here. So I do want to quickly talk about CRKT really quick as a company, as, you know, knife makers, or as a knife company, I should say. Now, this is everyone's opinion, not just mine. So most people in the knife community look at CRKT as a big box store brand. It just is what it is, right? You know, this isn't me trying to talk smack or anything like that. It's just a fact. So since people look at it like that, 
people tend to not expect the most out of it, the most out of them when it comes to their knives. Um, in most cases, big box store brands are going to be overpriced knives for the materials. You're going to wind up paying more money than you would if you bought it online, and you're going to probably get lesser materials than what you could get if you just bought a different knife online. However, I think it's in CRKT's best interest to start appealing to the knife community. So I'm really happy that they did this knife and you know the knives that some of the knives that they're doing um, i think it's a good idea for them to to get into the to compete to compete with some of these other companies that are not big box stores because big box store brands because the future people are going to be buying online it's just that's just the way it is. People are not going to be as likely to go and shell out more money for something less from a big box store when they can order it online for less money and watch videos and find out exactly what they're getting. People are more likely to start. The community has grown so much in the past five years. It's not like it's slowing down. It's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So, and the bigger it gets, the more videos that are out there, the more everything, the more testing. We have testing on basically every single steel. We've done so much. We've progressed so far in the past five years than in the past hundred. So because of that, people's knowledge on blade steels and materials and things like that are just getting better and better and better. And I'm talking about from people that aren't necessarily like knife reviewers and stuff. I'm talking about just people that buy knives. So it's going to be more likely that people are going to see knife reviews and hear people's perspectives and hear about, you know, the materials and whether or not it's a good price for the materials and so on. So competing with the other companies that are using good materials for a good price, you know, and with good action, good fit and finish, good everything is a good place to be. By the way, CRKT does have some other models that I'm really excited to try that I think also put them into this arena that I'm talking about where, you know, they, they're they starting to look like, you know, it's almost like, is this CRKT, you know? And, and I like that. I love that. I want to see more of that. But uh, yeah, they have some new, some other models that I am hoping I get on the channel as well. Now, I do think it would be pretty easy for CRKT you know, within like a year or so, maybe two years to, to completely change people's perspectives on what, when they hear CRKT, what they think. And I'm not saying people think negative. I'm not saying that. So please, please don't take it like that. I'm saying people's perspective from the knife community standpoint and the way they're spoken about and things like that. It's a big box store brand. Is it a good brand? Yeah, it's a good knife. They make good knives. No problems with that, but you're paying a little bit more for lesser materials. So, but I think it's very easy for them to step into the, the place where people start talking about CRKT is, you know, um, really good fit and finish, good materials. You know, they are a good knife for a knife guy or for somebody who carries a knife. That's a, a nice, reliable tool where you're not getting ripped off for the money and you are, you know, getting what you're paying for, for one, but it's also a competitor. They're competing. There's not a thousand other knives you could buy that are going to be superior to it for that price point. So I think that it's very easy for CRKT to get into that, that, that arena. I'm always rooting for CRKT. I want to make that clear. I've, I'm absolutely rooting for them. I want to see them do great. Um, they are a USA company, and I want to see them continue to shine. And I'm hoping that this is, I'm hoping that this is a good indicator of what is the future of CRKT. I'm hoping we see more like this. I'm not saying get out of big box stores. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it's a good idea to appeal to the knife community. Granted, some people, some companies might look at it like you know, like how small that is compared to big box stores, knives, you know, and the sales that they get. And that's probably very true. But like I keep saying, it's going to be less and less and less as years go on that people are going to be buying from big box stores over the internet. So anyways, um, just a quick ramble. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.